destinations across the continent, and they are always looking for new places to go. Add the fact that the Gulf-based carriers are starting new routes to Asia, including India, and more Asian airlines are joining the global airline alliances. And you have a potential of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of new travelers flying into this region and into India. Those carriers are flying between continents are using bigger, faster planes covering more territory in the air. The Boeing 777 is emerging as one of the best-selling models. It's relative fuel efficiency. It carries 300 passengers and it can cover 9,400 9, nautical miles. The Airbus 330 and 340 offer similar uh, uh, virtues. In October of 2011, All Nippon introduced the Dreamliner 727. It's slightly higher range and is, is, is more fuel efficient. The travel industry in the midst of, is in the midst of a sea change as technology changes the way consumers select a destination, book a trip, and budget for their vacation. The internet has clearly established itself as the world's favorite place to book travel, and according to IP, ITB World Monitor, online bookings now account for nearly half of all bookings. This explains why travel has become one of the top traded items online. All 2.0 initiatives provide two-way interaction and give the customer more leverage. Indeed, we're undergoing a huge paradigm shift at this moment as technology is enabling consumers to increase their power as they make travelers' choices. With 300 million travelers under the age of 25, the future of travel will be in for the promotional or booking realms, all increasingly uh, mitigate, mitigate on, uh, migrate uh, online. Mobile marketing is becoming an increasing important platform as the demand for smartphones explodes by 2014 more than four, 1 billion people will have these devices. That, of course, is simulating a demand for tremendous apps. Increasing more than 80% of India's online sales come from travel purchases, according to eMarket. And nearly five more, uh, the online buyers in India spend nearly five times more on leisure and unmanaged tra business travel than they spend on retail purchases. The total online business to business travel and e-commerce sales in India will reach 13.8 billion this year, and travel accounts for 11.5 billion of that. With these sheer numbers, the domestic travelers overwhelm the in, uh, overwhelm in the inbound, and the fact is that international travelers spend far more per visit. So encouraging international tourism growth is also vital. The key to success is being perceived as by the international travel as an attractive, safe destination with rich cultural and diversity, a well-developed infrastructure for tourism, and a concern for the environment. Medical tourism is becoming a global industry, and to the tune of 2.3 billion U.S. dollars this year, India was one of the first countries to recognize the potential of medical tourism, and today it is leading it is the leading hub of global medical tourism. It is estimated that by the year of 2015, India will receive more than a half a million medical tourists annually. And that is no coincidence. India's private medical sector offers the most advanced medical treatments and technology available in the world today. Patients can come in enjoy deluxe accommodations, and be treated by the finest doctors and be treat and, uh, that have Western medical training and all for the lowest prices. In addition, the patients are not expected to face any language barriers as most of the Indian population does speak English. One of the most important issues in the world today is... Wow. 
One of the most important issues today in the world is sustainability and environment. We've heard that uh, throughout many of the different presentations over this day and a half. Given tourism's position at the forefront of the climate change issue, we have had a vital interest in making a difference. The sustainability of the environment and of our industry are mutually dependent. With the potential for green jobs, environmentally friendly infrastructure creation, we can lead the, the transformation to the green economy while sufficiently contributing to the advance of the UN Millennium Development Goals. In 2008, the American Hotel and Lodging Association's Green Task Force launched a series of 70 comprehensive sustainable green guidelines designed to expressly create uh, sustainability in eco-friendly hotels. They include detailed descriptions, resources available, potential saving cal calculations, and ROIs. If you want to take a look at those uh, uh, guidelines are up on our website uh, and just go to uh, uh, www.ahla.com. Many, many developing areas including Southeast Asia and Africa are regions throughout the, the world with most at risk from the environmental, environmental de degradation and climate change. At the same time, they are the regions most dependent on economic contributions of travel and tourism. Indeed, the industry has proven to be one of the most effective means of creating wealth and has been a catalyst for gender equality, cultural preservation, and nature conservation in many developing countries. No longer are tourism growth and environmental stewardships at odds. In fact, they can be quite complementary, and you don't have to trade off one for the other. So therefore, promote the 28 World Heritage Sites and the 25 unique bio uh, uh, geographic zones. In, indeed, India provides diverse offerings such as adventure, rural, and wildlife tourism. There is a vast and beautiful coastline, virgin forests, and undisturbed idyllic islands that can be the fabulous tourism destinations for sailors and cruise tourists. Using tourism as a sustainable vehicle to fuel the economic and social growth while honoring local cultures and enhancing the livelihoods throughout the country. In the last 12 years, I have seen more research done on the customer's wants and needs than I have in the first 41 years of my career. It has led to new designs and concepts, but a question we always have to ask ourselves is what is next? And what is next always changing, given the, event, the world events, the generational shifts, and the global design trends? Hotels are known to be an incubator for trends in architecture, interior design, and dining. Design is more about creating a stage, an atmosphere. Good design should appeal to as many of the five senses as possible. Good design could appeal to, to those five senses. Obviously, there's a visual, but think sound to the waterfall streaming in the, the lobby or the music playing in the background. Think texture touches, and yes, even scent. The hotel restaurant adds a sense of taste to the entire picture. Time was that hotels were pretty much the same cookie cutter. A Sheraton looked like a Hilton, a Best Western looked like a Comfort Inn, and during the past two decades, design has made and become the branding lexicon. A key way for one brand is to distinguish itself from the others. Whether it be the Portman Atrium of the 70s or the design aesthetics of Ian Schrager, Schrager uh, when he opened the Morgans of the uh, Royalton in New York City, the new boutique hotels were quite revolutionary at the time, focusing on design, appealing to lifestyle and the personality of the guests. The, big, the boutique trend spread more broadly when when, when the W, the Starwood brand, came on the scene in the 1990s. Design was implemented on, based on, not on demographics, but rather on psychographics. It was focused on how trendy is our customer. Uh, open lobbies, known as living rooms, were created for, fashion, uh, for the fashionable to be seen and to see. Uh, signature restaurants were off the lobby. A friend of mine, uh, when they opened the W in New York City, uh, told me he was going there. So I called him up uh, a couple days after he was there and I said, well, how did you like it? And he said, I thought it was different. 
It was a good experience, but I was afraid to go in the cocktail lounge because I'd run into a lot of my daughter's friends. So the branding was designed there really to go after a certain group of, of people. What really happened is everybody is staying there now, and it isn't just segmented into uh, the, young, uh, uh, the young trendy customers. Electric personality, I guess. Branding by design, uh, uh, trend continues with the lifestyle brands of Aloft, Element, Hotel Indigo, and uh, Hyatt Place. But now the focus on specific areas. The lobby is transformed into a place to socialize, to plug in, to network, and to relax. The lobby is becoming the focal point of the hotel experience. The lobby redesign creates a memorable first impression, improves space functionality, and generates extra revenue. Throughout the day, the lobby is a private meetings with plenty of areas to plug in and link in. Despite um, inspired by coffee by day and wine by night and different lightings to suit the, each mood. It becomes less about check-in. What would you like to do? It, it becomes uh, more about check-in, uh, but more about what's uh, going on. In fact, some hotels are dispensing with their desks, their front desks altogether, transitioning to forms of electronic check-in by kiosks, iPad, and smartphone. This method of check-in is catching on at many types of hotels, as it is with check-out. In all of the Las Vegas hotels today have somebody going through the lines with an iPad checking you out so you don't have to have that experience of staying uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, in the line for any long period of time. And by the time you get the taxi cab stand, your bill is there and you can download it anytime that you want. Uh, and as more people become more acquainted with the swipe and go uh, technology, we expect to see more front desk people stepping out and really roaming uh, in the lobbies with portable check-in devices. Hotels are pumping signature scents into the public space. Brands like Carl Ritz-Carlton, Mandarinoria, Enel, Langham, and Sofitel and Western are doing it. The theory is because scent mingles with memory, a signature smell will make a strong, a strong first impre impression translating into increased brand recognition. In almost every city or places that has a view, rooftop lounges are now spouting up to utilize the normally dead space. Also, several hotels like the Marriott Chicago and the Fairmont in Washington, D.C. are using rooftops to host beehives. The honey produced and is then utilized in the kitchen and in the spa. Many hotels have developed herb and vegetable gardens on their roofs and outside uh, in some of their outside cocktail areas. Guest rooms are becoming more functional and sleek. No more armoires. We now see flat screen TVs hung on the wall, electric outlets com clean, com conveniently incorporated into the furniture and accessible to the guest to meet the needs of the technology revolution. Somebody earlier, uh, one of the Young Turks in there, as it said that more people are carrying uh, electronic products with them. A study was just done. Uh, most people have two electronic products they need to have. Uh, in Germany, the average is three. So it's important that uh, we have the right bandwidth for two universities in the United States, uh, Widener University, Widener University and Widener University and University of Delaware both have guest rooms uh, in their campus hotels where they test the latest guest technology uh, in their rooms. There is also focus on individual comfort. Hotels are offering every, everything from pillow menus to hydro, um, hypoallergenic rooms. Some hotels are offering scent menus to make rooms smell like fruit or flower or spice. Bathrooms are changing as well, and more than ever before, it's, it's about the shower. Showers are taking the place of the, of the uh, bathtubs in, in many locations. The next step is the fashion hotel, the formula, take an upscale hotel, jazz it up with a partnership with a high fashion design like uh, Missoni or Verace or Armani, and let the games begin. And it's not just fashion houses getting in the act, but some of the others, like Bulgaria, is teaming up with Marriott uh, and several international ventures. But uh, 
Vicari is working with uh, Starwood to create a branded hotel in New York City. At Fashion Week, this week in New York City, W Brand announced collaboration with the fashion industry on existing new facilities. And one more is really the, the Six Star Hotel. Uh, we've seen that being built in the, the Middle East, and we see Horst Schultze and uh, Barry Sternlich are also developing Six Star Hotels with extensive design, butlers, partial, uh, palatial furnishings, massive rooms that are backed up by hotels, Six Star claim of exceptional services. But a bigger thing, in fact, is the green movement, and we've talked about that in many, many, uh, many ways. We've seen a lot of that come out of the Scandinavian countries and in, uh, in Europe. One of the hotel industry's probably newest trends uh, is really coming into its own in 2012, and that's the concept of two properties owned by the same company on one large piece of land, or dual branded properties that are two hotels located in one building uh, with a common meeting space. However, dual branding isn't anything new. It started in the 60s with Sheraton, tested a concept uh, in a few hotels. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was way ahead of its time. Given all the changes to the design hardware in recent years, expect that the revolution in the, few, the next few years will resolve around computer software. What's next for the middle of the decade? Who knows? But opting for technology as the next transition tool it would be your best bet. At recent global conferences, there's been acknowledgement that geo geopolitical issues have become the primary factor impacting the health and future growth of the industry. While the industry recognizes the importance of safety and security, we do not want to impede the flow of business or leisure travel unnecessarily. After all, the end, in that end, travel and tourism about exchanging ideas, opening the minds to new cultures and different ways of thinking. Travel and tourism can be a huge factor in international understanding and world peace. But if we shut the borders and we don't allow people in to visit and we don't allow guest workers to our country, the door to peace is closed that much more. For the good of both international and world peace and international economic development, we need to ensure that even in the current climate, travel and tourism prospers and the hotels need not be afraid and people need not be afraid to venture beyond the borders of their own countries. So let's all work together to achieve these goals. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all aware that the only way to build a stronger association and a stronger industry is work together as one. The American Hotel and Lodging Association, our educational industry, uh, Institute looks forward to working with all, all of you. Thank you. God bless you and the Republic of India. Before I take any questions, if there is time, I need to make uh, two presentations. And one is to uh, Mr. Bharat, if you could uh, come up here, I've got something for you. What I would like to do is, is really uh, present you with a certificate of achievement for the collaborations between your association in the West and with the American Educational uh, Institute on collaborating on developing Indian-centric uh, uh, training materials that you distributed to all of your members. So on behalf of us, thank you very much. One other presentation, and that really uh, goes to uh, the Taj Group for incorporating 33 of our uh, educational programs and their online training program. And I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Anurag, the Director of Learning, uh, to accept on behalf of the Taj Group. Does anybody have any questions? I don't know if we have time. I talked a lot longer than I should have. Sorry for that. I, I have a question, Mr. 
Yes, sir. Since we're talking about trends and we're talking about how we can take learnings from uh, the various associations abroad, our theme of the convention is employment. And uh, as all our speakers and my speech also mentioned about the employment opportunities that this industry creates. Right. The major challenge that uh, the Western countries have today is on employment. And President Obama is also concentrating all his energies to say, there is enough employment opportunity, please don't panic and make the recession such a big huge cry. We in India have an opportunity today because of the shortage of rooms and everything. We looking at a 44 million employment potential for the next five years. Uh, we're all right with it. I'm only wondering why uh, the US or the UK or anybody else is not taking a clue there and saying tourism, employment opportunity, here's a solution, President. Yeah, well, one of the, one of the problems with uh, the unemployment in the United States and the travel and tourism industry, there's a lot of jobs that people don't want to take. And they don't want to do, and if they were making $50 an hour working in the uh, auto mills or the steel mills that went down, they don't want to go in to be uh, into the hospitality industry. And that's one of our major problems. Though we are working with the United States government and different state governments on workforce development programs to retrain people that are willing, willing to work. Uh, our, our unemployment uh, will be getting better. It's just going to take a little more time. Uh, both uh, the current administration, if they get reelected.